quarterback, number 16, Joe Montana. Head coach Bill Walsh and the rest of the NFC champions, the San Francisco 49ers. And welcome to Inside the 49ers Throwback Thursday with Chris Wilson. Kick off the 49ers dynasty with Super Bowl 16. We have Cool Joe under center, Bill on the sideline, Matt in the CBS Sports booth, and the greatest goal line stand in Super Bowl history. So sit back and enjoy this instant classic. Believe me, the view from inside is better than that from the outside as it's frozen outside, but very pleasant inside the Silverdome in Pontiac. Cincinnati and San Francisco, Super Bowl 16. It doesn't really make any difference because we are indoors about the wind, but that's the story on who got the ball first. The teams that scored first won 13 out of 15 games. Jim Breach will kick off for Cincinnati. That's the return unit for San Francisco. It'll be Amos Lawrence, number 20, and Bill Ring back there with him. And Breach doesn't have the range, perhaps, of some of the other kickers, but he does have great control of the football, a size 5 shoe. That's, maybe that's why he doesn't have a lot of range, Pat, with a size 5 shoe. You aren't going to kick it downtown, are you? But Breach, nevertheless, has done a good job. Not only a size 5, but a different shoe on each foot. And these kickers love this indoor stadium. They all raved about this place. And Breach, perhaps, feeling a little pressure. Hooks it out of bounds, and he'll move back five to the 30. Super Bowl 16. What a buildup. We've been here since Monday, and I felt like running down and playing. I have goosebumps all over. I'm glad we didn't. Temperature outside, 13 degrees with the windshield factor minus 21. You can see the forecast. But inside is what counts right now for these 80,000 plus those on the field. Kenny Anderson loosening on the near side. The Bengals, the home team, thus they got to choose what jersey they'd wear. They chose the black with the tiger stripes. Breach will kick it off again from the 30 this time. There's the book this year on Kenny Anderson. Well, that was a little different type of kickoff that time. The first one, they had a shift where they shifted over to the left. Then Breach tried to kick it to that side, kicked it too far. So now from the 30, Breach again. In that same direction, Amos Lawrence from the nine. Lawrence Rondo fumbled, and the Bengals had it back. John Simmons made the recovery. Don Bass made the hit that knocked it loose. What a way to start a Super Bowl. That's what Cincinnati wants to do. Come out, make something happen. Take the ball away. Look right there, we saw Frazier knock the ball right on, right out of Armstrong's hand. And Simmons made the recovery. So it'll be first and 10 Bengals at the 49er 26 and a half yard line. A lot of people thought, so-called experts, that turnovers would decide. There's the first one. Alexander and Johnson behind Kenny Anderson and Alexander flanks very wide to the left, almost out of bounds. Anderson will throw on first. He's got Isaac Curtis. He breaks one tackle. He's inside the 20 to the 18. We were talking to Forrest Gregg this week, and I said, are you going to start running to settle down? He said, this is a Super Bowl. We're going to come out passing. There's no reason to settle down. Look at Isaac Curtis. Just a little delay there right in front of Ronnie Lott. Lott comes up, misses a tackle. Did you notice, John, that the 49ers opened with a four-man line defense? Now they've gone back to the three. Second and two. Pete Johnson gets the handoff. And the 255-pound fullback, or whatever he weighs, gets perhaps a first down. Craig Cookie on the stop. Let's look at the offensive unit of the Cincinnati Bengals. Anderson, the quarterback. Pete Johnson, who just carried the fullback. Charles Alexander, the running back, the other back. Collinsworth, who's had such a great year. And Isaac Curtis, the wide receiver. Tight end, speaking of great years, Dan Ross had a dandy. Munoz, Lapham, Bush, Montoya, and Wilson up front. 
First down, Cincinnati. It's about as close as you can get to get a first down, is it? Close enough. Cincinnati fans are here in mass. They've been here. We were here at 1 o'clock, and this place was half full at 1 o'clock, three hours before game time. Last night when we came out of the hotel in downtown Detroit, it was just a sea of orange. Bingo mania. Danny Anderson, first and ten. Two tight end lineup. One lone setback. Anderson moves, scrambles, throws. Collinsworth. Dan Ross, the tight end. I'm sorry. That's the kind of pass he catches. Dwayne Board made the stop. Anderson, with that mobility, got away from the rush and found his tight end, Ross. You're right, and that's what helped him. He bought a little time here. As we'll see here, he gets rushed. There's someone right at his feet. You see here, he scrambles out to the right a little, takes a second, then a third one, and finds his big tight end, number 89, Dan Ross, in there. What a target he's been for Kenny Anderson. 71 catches on the year. From Northeastern, and he's been a tremendous find for Cincinnati. Find might be a little old word because he's been good for a while. It's Johnson closest to Anderson and Alexander Deep. First and goal. Alexander to the four. Breaks one tackle. Knocked back to about the five by Willie Harper first. Let's look at that San Francisco defense. The front three when they're in the three-man line. Stucky Reese and Board. They make a lot of changes. The four linebackers, Harper, Reynolds, Pukki, and Keena Turner. And the secondary, that great young one. Lock, Wright, Williamson, and Dwight Hicks. No gain for Alexander, so make it second and goal from the five. No score. Two tight ends again. Ross and ML Harris, number 83. Ross is on the left. Harris is on the right. Anderson drops. He is hit by Stucky. And dropped for a loss all the way back to the 11. A minus six on the sack. I'll tell you what caused this was the pass rush. We'll see this. He's looking out to the left. He was trying to find his left tight end, M.L. Harris. He couldn't find anything to the left. And just when he turned to the right, there was big Jim Stuckey. We'll see 79 here making the rush. Starts outside of Wilson, comes back inside. And just as Anderson turned, he was right in his face. A very good maneuver by Stuckey. And now they see Fred Dean lined up on the right side of the defensive line. He'll operate against Munoz. Three receivers on the left for Cincinnati, and Anderson drops. Picked off. Intercepted by the 49ers, Dwight Hicks. Hicks to the 30 and out of bounds at the 32, and the Bengals come away empty. I'm, I'm sure the 49ers know about the team that scores first in the Super Bowl. They started on the left-hand side. They had three receivers. That's called a triple formation. We can see all three. Now, he was looking for the outside man, 85, Isaac Curtis, who comes in underneath. Hicks saw him all the way and stepped right in front of him for the interception. Perhaps Anderson would like to have that one back because Hicks was never fooled. He was there right from the very beginning. That might be the most important statistic in football. Look at that. The top five teams that had the fewest turnovers were all in the playoff. But today we start this Super Bowl and already we have two turnovers. One apiece. And the 49ers will take over first and ten from their own 32-yard line. Montana will go ahead and throw. It's a screen to Patton. Ricky Patton gets about eight. Before he is waffled by Eddie Edwards and Jim LeClaire. The offensive backs and receivers for San Francisco. Montana, Patton and Cooper the runners, Solomon and Clark the wide receivers. Tight end is Charlie Young, that's spelled correctly. Audic Ayers, Quillen, Cross, and Fonhorst. The offensive line, not that big, but a very cohesive unit. Solomon, there was some doubt about him, but he looks healthy. Clark is lined up tight to the left. Look out for him. Clark has it. 
First down, San Francisco at the 44-yard line. Glenn Cameron made the stop. Now, watching the 49ers over the year, early in the game, they like to get a first pass to Dwight Clark. This is Bill Walsh's idea because he's a big target in there, and and you can always find him. Well, watch him. He's tight there. See the second man in, 87. Charlie Young goes in motion away. Now watch Dwight Clark. There's a tight end. He's big enough to do that. Comes right across underneath the linebackers, catches a ball, turns it up the field. First down, 49ers. This is Earl Cooper. He has to cut back quickly, and he does well to get back to the line of scrimmage. Ross Browner made the stop. Let's take a look at that. Very solid Cincinnati defense. Edwards, Wilson Whitley, and Ross Browner, the front three. The linebackers, Harris, Williams on the outside, LeClaire and Cameron, the two on the inside. Very tough group. The secondary, Breeden and Riley, the corners, Kemp and Hicks, the strong safety and free safety. Bill Ring is now in the backfield with Earl Cooper on second and ten. From the Bengal 44, Montana drops. Complete Freddie Solomon. About eight yards. Bobby Kemp made the tackle. One of the thing I like about this 49er team is they start out passing to establish a run. Now watch Freddie Solomon here. He's the outside man. He doesn't look like he's limping at all. He runs up. Now that's a hook in a zone between the corner and the linebacker. Under control, shoulder square back to the quarterback. Some doubt about whether or not Solomon would be able to make it, but he said after he injured his knee, hey, this is a Super Bowl. Patton gives on a reverse to Solomon. He gets back to Montana. The pass is complete to Charlie Young, the tight end, and it's just a great catch by that veteran. What a play that was. You know, Freddie Solomon in college at the University of Tampa was a quarterback. So, in fact, he's the third quarterback on this team. Now, watch the play. It's a reverse. Hand it back to Patton. Hand us, hands it to Solomon, who throws it back to Montana and up to Charlie Young. Montana is now 4-4-4. Four, four, four. But it took a great catch by Charlie Young just then to keep that stat in order. Now, as Easton Ramson, who went in motion, Montana again. He throws high. Almost picked off. That looks like Ray Griffin who might have been in. Or is it Lewis Breeden? I only saw the four. It's Breeden. It was Lewis Breeden. He had a, a man in front of Breeden and a man behind Breeden. You see right, right there, there's a man in front of Solomon. And then he has Easton Ransom behind him. And he threw it over Solomon and in front of Ransom. So it'll be second and ten. The ball at the Cincinnati 33. They are just about in range for Ray Worshing right now. Earl Cooper is the lone setback. Montana gets to him. And Cooper barrels down close to a first down for San Francisco. Down inside the 25 to about the 23. Bobby Kemp made the tackle. Those people aren't booing out there. They're saying, Coop, Coop. You know, everyone gets so concerned about the 49ers passing game that a lot of times the defense plays rather loose, and that allows that type of game. Cooper trots off. There is Earl, who had such a great rookie year. There he goes. Bill Walsh said earlier in the week, I wouldn't be surprised if Earl Cooper didn't have a great day. He thinks he plays much better on artificial turf than he does on regular turf. Johnny Davis has replaced him. They give to Bill Ring. Ring over the right side, stays on his feet and gets some good yardage. Lewis Breeden again made the tackle, but Ring gets down to the 15, almost. Forrest Gregg doesn't like that because the last two plays, those are just power plays, and you don't like to have power. Now watch this replay. Watch Johnny Davis, number 38, the fullback. He comes in there, leads, reams out a hole for Bill Ring, who follows right in behind him and picks up about seven yards. That Johnny Davis got a good block on LeClaire that time to set that play up. The ninth play of this drive coming up. Johnny Davis looks like a guard coming through there. He's about 235. Ring and Cooper now the setbacks. Here's Cooper. Oh, with a 
forearm shiver, but just before he went out of bounds against Ken Riley. One of the things you try and do early in the game is run, run some sweeping plays, some wide plays to stretch out that defense so they don't tighten up on you. And that's what the 49ers did on that last play. Bill Walsh. Coach of the year. The NFC, Walsh on third down. They need about three. Tough situation against these Niners. They don't mind throwing it. Wide open is Solomon. He's out of bounds at the one. Lewis Breeden took him down. This is something. The last three days they've been worried about Freddie Solomon. Watch, he starts outside, comes in motion inside Charlie Young, who runs to a post. He comes back inside, back to the outside. Lewis Breeden didn't get over there until after he had caught the ball. Here's Reggie Williams, the outside linebacker of the Bengals. He's their number one pass rusher and number one sacker. But that time, Bill Ring put him up in the air. He did a number. First and goal at the one, Johnny Davis and Ricky Patton. Johnny Davis. Behind Montana, and it's a touchdown. Davis went over the top. Montana kept the quarterback sneak, and he got in. I think that Bengal, that Bengal defense was in there. They're all tight. They're waiting for Johnny Davis. Now watch Montana. Just a little delay, steps to the right, and then dives over for the touchdown. Ray Wershing now with Montana holding. We'll try the extra point. And yes, it's good. 5.52 left to play in the first quarter of Super Bowl 16 and the San Francisco 49ers lead 7 to nothing. That scoring drive was very impressive. They went 11, they went 68 yards, 11 plays. Montana scored on a quarterback sneak. Given a little boost from Johnny Davis. Wershing kickoff. Bounding around, fielded by Furser. He started it at the 6, he makes it back to about the 19. Rick Jervis tripped him up. And the Bengals have their second possession. They were close, but an interception by Dwight Hicks turned them back. 49ers 13 and 1 over the year when they scored first. And they have scored first in Super Bowl 16. First down Cincinnati Bengals at the 19. Kenny Anderson, the quarterback, with Pete Johnson and Alexander behind him. And now Alexander comes out wide to the right. Anderson out to Johnson. Big Pete comes back inside, gets out to the 22 and a half. Bobby Leopold on the stop. Here was a big play in the drive. It was third and three. Freddie Solomon starts out here, comes in motion. Charlie Young here runs a post pattern, and then Solomon from this point starts out, runs a corner pattern there, and that's the one that got him down to the goal line. Bad circle. Watch this, you see he starts in motion. Breeden comes in with him. Now watch as Charlie Young goes down there. He kind of picks off Breeden, forces him deep so that Solomon can get underneath. Anderson back to throw again. They need seven for a first. Outside Johnson. He's a big load out there when he starts that move upfield. Ronnie Lott got him around the ankles where you have to take him and took him down short of a first down. Now that's Henry Bullitt down there, the defensive coordinator of the Bengals, and he's talking about the plays and the formation that the 49ers used on that last drive. See, they can straighten things right out there. So he's talking about the linebacker. He's talking about the outside linebacker coming. A double tight end set up now. ML Harris and Ross both in the game. Along with Purser set up on the flank. They need a couple. Anderson, so dangerous and so good at this, has his first. Shoved out of bounds by Ronnie Lott. Anderson stops for a little chat. <laughs> Maybe pick up a play. 
I would imagine they'll signal it in anyway. First down, Cincinnati. He was the second leading rusher on the Cincinnati team behind Johnson. Right. Pete Johnson was their leading rusher, and their starting halfback, Charles Alexander, was third behind Anderson. The players say that Forrest Gregg has radar eyes. I don't know if that's good or bad. I think it's good. It depends on whether you're a player or not. If you've been bad, it's not good. Anderson gets straight ahead Johnson. A couple stucky at the San Francisco defense. Archie Reese also on the bottom of that pile. Cincinnati Bengals offense, 1980-1981. They ranked 18th in 80 when Anderson was hurt quite a bit. You know, a big part of that is, is Chris Collinsworth. They drafted him as a second-round draft choice, but what an addition he's made to this football team. 67 catches for Collinsworth. There he is. Over 1,000 yards. Here comes Alexander in motion on second down, seven. Anderson will put it up again. Fred Dean chases him from behind. Anderson can run, slides. He might be a couple of yards shy of the first down. Eric Reich put the threat on him that made him go down. You know, that was the thing we were talking about before the game, the way that Anderson runs. You watch those linemen. If they don't stay in their lane, now we'll see it here. You see Anderson drops back. He's trying to pass the ball. But now he looks, there's no one open. He sees a little lane right there. And now when he gets past that, he knows that he has enough to get up close to that first down. I'll tell you, he breaks teams' backs doing that. It is third down, a yard at the 39. The Cincinnati 39. 49ers leading 7 0. Johnson will get the call. And Johnson, I believe, has enough for a first down. The Cincinnati fans think so, at least. Jack Reynolds is the man who made the stop. Pat Haggerty thought so, the referee. He was giving it the old sign first down. From the 41, first and 10. Anderson will throw again. Going deep for Collinsworth. Just knocked away at the last minute. What a play by Eric Wright. Collinsworth had a step. He did. That was a great reaction at the end there by Wright. We see Ken Anderson. He thought that he had this one. Watch his throw. It really is a perfect throw. You want to throw it over his outside shoulder and in front of him right there. And really, I don't think Eric Wright touched that ball. Did you see Collinsworth running when he was trying to look behind him with going straight ahead? His back was almost bent in the wrong direction. Double. Collinsworth again this time goes out to the left. There's the man who made that last play. He may not have touched it, but I think he blocked his view at least. Johnson, the lone setback, stays in and now comes out. Pass, Collinsworth, out of bounds, incomplete. Eric Wright again out there with him. 146 left to play in the first quarter. We were talking earlier about the running game and how you try and stretch the defense with your running game. You try and do the same thing with your passing game, and that's what they did with Collinsworth. Go deep early, throw one, let them know that you're going to do it and make them play loose and off you. Even if you don't complete it. That's right. That's the best thing you can do early is sweep and throw deep. It will be third down. They promised us they would throw, and indeed they have. Both teams. That's what got them there. No need to make a change. Trider in the game now for Cincinnati. Anderson looking left and keeps looking left and now is taken down by Keena Turner. He couldn't get anybody open. He had to tuck it away and they'll have to punt. The big difference in this play is that they brought their linebackers. They bring Keena Turner on a blitz. Now Anderson sees there's no one open. Good coverage downfield. He pumps. Now when he starts to run by those linemen, they have another linebacker right there, number 58, Keenan Turner. Lawrence Pillars put the good pressure on Anderson and Pat, Pat McAnally. Look at his average in dome stadiums, over 50 yards, six feet, six inches tall. This one won't help his average off the side of his foot. Takes a good bounce to Cincinnati and continues to roll. And it might help his average. <laughs> It rolls all the way down to the 10-yard line. He didn't catch it. 53 yards. McAnally. 
53 yards with a shank punt. So good things do happen. It's 7-0 San Francisco. Joe Montana moves his backs. Earl Cooper and Ricky Patton into the eye. First down throw to Dwight Clark. Very nearly picked off by Riley. That one was a little bit late from Montana. It was a little late, and Ken Riley, number 13 in his 13th year, you know, he's an old, experienced corner back there, and you don't mess too much with these people. You know, they see it, we watch here, a little late, as you say, but Riley has a good jump on the ball, and that came very close to being a touchdown. We were almost in a 7-7 game. Watch Reggie Williams here again. He's their leading sacker. We see that right after Montana threw the ball, or right at the time, Reggie Williams hit him. Two tight ends now for San Francisco as Easton Ransom is one of them. Oh. This was Ricky Patton taken down by Ross Browner. Way back at the three-yard line, a loss of seven. And that is a big play. He's on the right of the screen here. We're going to sit. See the outside? He takes a little inside move, flattens out right down the line of scrimmage, and picks up Ricky Patton before he can get his shoulders turned up. Got in behind John Ayers, who was pulling. He and Montana played together at Notre Dame. If the 49ers don't get out of here on this play, that could be a big play because they don't have the 15 yards for their punter. Line of scrimmage. Back at the three. Penalty marker down. That would be the first one of the day as Earl Cooper comes out on the carry. Stopped by Eddie Edwards. I think that last penalty, Pat, was was against well, the Bengals. The field. Defense decline the penalty. First down. Thirty-second clock kicking away with now twenty seconds left on it. So no problem there. That's Ricky Patton, well shy of the first down, and that would be the last play of quarter number one as San Francisco's. Punting unit comes on. Mike St. Clair made the tackle. And we'll look at San Francisco's barefooted kicker, Jim Miller, when we come back. Once you're on and once you're off, lived on a farm in Mississippi when he was a boy, he said. Didn't have anybody to play with, so he kicked rocks and cans and footballs, all barefoot. Do Mike himself. Fuller. Yes. Mike Fuller. Back deep for the Bengals. Back there by himself. Miller has never had a kick block. And this is a dandy. High, high. Back to the 44 to Fuller. And Fuller gets near midfield, and he's knocked down quickly by Rick Jervis. The give is to Johnson. He gets into San Francisco territory to about the 46. Craig Pookie on the bottom of the pile, the first 49er to make contact. And among those in attendance, the vice president, George Bush. Behind him in the leather coat is Daryl Stingley. The injured New England Patriot wide receiver. I understand for Billy Sullivan, who owns the Patriots, of course, that you were just magnificent when he was hurt, John, and attending the hospital and just attended. Daryl Stingley is a brave man and a real competitor. Anderson to Collinsworth, and he has it inside the 30. Ronnie Lott was there. Great throw from Anderson. Outstanding catch from Collinsworth. I think they were trying to get in that formation the time before, Pat, but they had both wide receivers on the same side. This time they straightened it out. We see Collinsworth go all the way across the backfield in motion, up the field, and then just a little short post in there. Again, catching it over the linebackers and in front of the secondary. We asked Collinsworth during the week if he still felt like a rookie. And he said, hey, man, I've played enough games now, so I'm taped together and just jangling around. I'm not a rookie anymore. Alexander goes in motion. Somebody jumps. I think it was Anthony Munoz on the left side. It could have been Lapham, one of the two. Number 62, offense. This is a big, wide offensive line for Cincinnati. Penalty so far for Cincinnati and Hurt. Three for 15. It's first and 15. Line of scrimmage to San Francisco 33 with the 49ers leading 7-0. Alexander again moves out wide to the left. 
Collinsworth. Collinsworth split in that direction. Ross. Incomplete. He almost came up with a diving one-handed catch. He thinks he did. She thought he did. You know, they had that same pattern on the both sides, Pat. They had Ross doing it on the right side. Collinsworth doing it on the left side. Let's, it's a it's a corner pattern. He just gets that left hand out there and brings it in, but you see the ball hit the ground. That wasn't a catch. Look at it from the opposite angle. Here it is. You know, Dan Ross has made a lot of these catches, though. Look how he puts that left hand out, grabs it back into his body, but before it gets to his body, it hits the turf. It got on the green just a minute. And the official was right there. Second and 15 from the 33. Anderson again will attempt to throw. Steps into the pocket. Intended for Isaac Curtis. Penalty marker down. Lynn Thomas was out there with Curtis. And the Bengals love it. And you're going to see there was just a little bump there just before the ball got there. Now watch Lynn Thomas, number 28. He's the fifth defensive back in there at left corner. Now watch, Curtis makes his break to the sideline. Now watch, right there. Illegal See the right contact. shoulder on the bump Defense. before the ball got there. A fifth round draft choice. One of those outstanding people, young people in that San Francisco secondary. He had good coverage all the way. He really did, and he was trying to close on the ball. Contact. Number 28, defense, first down. Talk about a good draft and how you solidify a defense. Ronnie Lott was number one. John Hardy, who's still with the team. Eric Wright and Carlton Williamson, those first three in yellow, all starters. And Lynn Thomas, also a good find, who just made that last play. Right, and he comes in in all the passing situations. Alexander doesn't carry it much. 49ers are ready quickly. He might have gotten two. Willie Harper led that defense. You know, with those draft choices, you said they had the first three players. Look look what they did with that. They were 27th in defense in 1980, and they drafted those three starting defensive backs. They went up to second this year. Of course, they've also added Hacksaw Reynolds and Fred Dean. 415 points allowed in 80. 250 this year. Dean is on the field right now, number 74. Two tight ends for Cincinnati. One setback. Anderson has Collinsworth at the five. Eric Wright, the defender, a fumble. San Francisco football. Collinsworth had it and lost it. And look at Forrest Gregg. You know, the last thing that the Bengals said last night is once we catch a ball, we have to hold on to it. Look at Kenny Anderson. Whew. What do you have to do? Number 21 is Eric Wright. He's defending rookie against rookie. Eric Wright against Chris Collinsworth. Nice move on the end. He catches the ball. Eric Wright brings his right hand around and knocks the ball out. And Lynn Thomas makes the recovery. Number 28. Third and seven from the 11. Montana puts ring in motion. He rolls right. And throws to Freddie Solomon, complete for a 49er first down. Knocked out of bounds by Bo Harris. I'll tell you, the 49ers, they'll, they'll go anything. They'll throw it in any part of the field. They'll do anything. Now we're going to see, here's what Montana likes to do. Instead of dropping back, he wants to get out here by some time. He has a deep pattern here. That drives the defense out, then out here. And he rolls out here and throws it from this position. You see, he starts out there. Solomon came across. The second man there, see, he was inside. Clark went deep. We pick it up live, and I mean live, as Montana being chased and goes out of bounds. Chased by Ross Browner. Again, knocked out of bounds, but Montana picked up a good game. The young quarterback is six out of eight. Solomon has caught three of those. John, we had a penalty a minute ago. Let's look at this first. 
Well, we'll look at it here now. Here's Reggie Williams and Brown are chasing. You know, Montana not only runs, he has pretty good speed. He gains some ground on those guys. We had a penalty against San Francisco, pass interference, we thought. They only gave him five yards and did not move the sticks up to the spot of the foul. I think John has some information about that, but here's Earl Cooper with some room. Cooper breaks a tackle, gets into Cincinnati territory. Knocked down by Glenn Cameron, but he has a 49er first down. And they're yelling, Coop, Coop, Coop on that one. On that play when Cincinnati had the ball, when the ball was in the air, he was hit. Now watch Bo Harris, number 53, is the outside linebacker. Fawn Horse comes in, gets him to the inside so Cooper can get free around the right end. First down. There's a story on Earl Cooper. First and 10 at the Cincinnati 48. And Cooper remained behind Montana. Now they shift. Ricky Patton gets inside the 45 to about the 44. There's Bill Walsh. And you see, now he sends in a play. Usually they signal in from the sideline. In the last game, Pat, when they played Cincinnati, they felt that Cincinnati had their signals. So they changed their signals for this game, and Bill said he'll send in some and signal some. There is their backup quarterback who usually does the signaling, Guy Benjamin. Montana intended for Solomon again. He threw it out of bounds. Montana's pass intended for Solomon incomplete. Covered by Lewis Green. There's Bill Walsh. He has that list there in his right hand. Now, as we said earlier, he has down the 25 plays, the first 25 plays that he's going to use in this game. And he gives them to guy Benjamin, number seven, who signals them into Joe Montana. That doesn't necessarily mean that he will use them in that order. He just wants to get them done. Right. And then, you know, these short yardage and goal line, of course, would take him out of those. Charlie Young is split way at the top of your picture, the tight end. Clark was in motion. Montana, if he has time, will throw. This is what he does well. And Clark does that well, too. First down, San Francisco. Hit by Lewis Breeden first. Clark has that uncanny ability to get open, and Montana can buy enough time until he can do it. And he did on this play. Mon uh, we'll see Montana go back here. Clark comes in motion. Now he starts in. It's supposed to be an in. You see, he was going to throw inside to Clark. When Clark sees him scramble, he scrambles out with him to the outside. That is teamwork. Here comes Clark in motion. Now watch, he's going to run an impact. You see him start in? Now right here, he sees him scramble, so he scrambles with him. First and 10 at the 32, Ricky Patton. Barrels down to just outside the 20, perhaps the 21. Very near another San Francisco first down. Ken Riley tripped him up. Now there's Bill. We know that this play is on his list because he looked at his list, gave it to Dwight Clark, Changed his mind, though, didn't it? Now you look back at Benjamin, who sent his signal in. It'll be second and one at the 22. Mike Schumann in the game. The handoff is inside the Patton. He'll have a first down inside the 20 with some to spare. Jim LeClaire, the tackler for Cincinnati. As we were watching that last sequence over there, I think Bill Walsh thought it was a first down. There's a defensive staff. The first person there is Henry Fulla, who is a defensive coordinator, and we see him sending in the defense for the Bengals. And the other is a former teammate of mine, Dick Modulewski. Is he Big Mo or Little Mo? He's Little Mo. And they had no Mo? They had no more, and they had Dynamo. First and 10, San Francisco. Fake to Cooper, the handoff to Clark. He's going nowhere. Lewis Breeden there very quickly. And a penalty marker goes down. Perhaps a late hit. 
That was a reverse. The other day, we were watching the 49ers practice, and off this play, they have a pass. I tell you, this is a big mistake for the Bengals here. Watch this. We see Clark coming in. It's the end of the run. He really didn't gain anything. Now, everything is okay there. He goes down. The whistle blows, and it's that last blow in there by Jim LeClaire, number 55. That's 15 big yards. And they walk it off against Cincinnati. Personal foul, number 55, defense, first down. That was the voice of Pat Haggerty, the referee. Here, watch 55. You know, right there, everything's okay. The whistle probably blows, but two, after the whistle blows, you can't hit him. The other rule is you can't hit him in the head. First and 10 from just outside the 10. The throw to Cooper, and Cooper scores for San Francisco from Montana. Big Earl Cooper. Now we'll see Cooper fake through to the right. Then he just goes across underneath, underneath all the coverage, picks it up, takes it into the end zone. Worshing with Montana holding makes it San Francisco 14. Cincinnati nothing. Earl Cooper. We mentioned before that Bill Walsh thought he might be a big factor today and he surely has been that. San Francisco 14 nothing. There's the story of that San Francisco drive and once again the touchdown although it was a good drive 92 yards in 12 plays came after a turnover. They recovered the fumble by Collinsworth. Ray Wershing set to kick off and back deep. There's Wershing back deep for Cincinnati. Verser and Archie Griffin with Griffin standing in front of Verser at the moment. Wershing signaling that he's ready. Low bouncing kick handled. Finally by Verser. No, he hasn't handled it yet. And Verser is going to be down inside the five. But a penalty marker goes down. Eric Wright was down there quickly. We were talking about things that the kickers like on this field you know besides the weather and the wind they love to kick on artificial turf and get those types of bounces it's the second time we've seen that talking a minute ago about that 92 yard drive by San Francisco that's the longest in Super Bowl history they started at the eight you want to know what he said if you didn't hear him that was blocking from behind above the waist I like we've, that. we've seen that a lot. Been, excuse me. <laughs> I was just going to say it's been the number one call all I think year. So Cincinnati will start from their own two-yard line. Agony says, "Let's go." 14 nothing, San Francisco with 6:42 left to play in the first half of Super Bowl number 16. Anderson has Collinsworth to the left and Isaac Curtis to the right. Johnson. Meet with some room. Let's look at the touchdown play again. Again, it's Earl Cooper here, who's a receiver. The linebackers drop deep in here into the end zone to protect in the end zone. Cooper fakes through here, then runs across, and Montana fakes, comes back, and hits him right here. See the defensive backs, they turn and ran deep to the end zone. Cooper was able to come underneath the whole group. The fake is what set up the whole thing. Second down, Cincinnati at the six. Anderson drops into the end zone. Throws up to his tight end, Ross. Ross cuts up field for Bingo first down to the 15. Craig Pukey tripped him up. Again, we see, you know, Dan Ross is probably one of the best tight ends in football at this. You know, getting deep, getting underneath between linebackers, 
You see he's a big target in there 89. He gets behind the linebackers and in front of the secondary. Watch him. You see what he did. He went down that time. See he faked like he was blocking and then got up and came across. That is a big Cincinnati play. They always do that. Uh, first down at the 15. That goes back to the days of Paul Brown. Anderson outside Curtis. Incomplete. Ronnie Lott on the coverage. Go, go, go. Go, Talking about Paul Brown. Of course Paul Brown was one of the great all time coaches in this game and we see a lot of his influence in this. Look at this both touchdowns the first the Bengals had an interception the 49ers got seven points out of it Then they had a fumble and the 49ers got another seven all their 14 points have really come result of turnover and both times Cincinnati was down inside the five yard line second down Anderson drops and they have to hurry gets away from one he gets it out to Ross. Ross has it go right through his hand. Lawrence Pillars is the one who made Anderson do the moving. Let's watch Fred Dean on his rush here and you'll see. Now watch Ross. You see he's coming in cutting Fred Dean first. Munoz number 78 just waits for him. Ross then gets up and comes underneath. Now that was a good pass. He was ready to turn up and start running before the ball got there. That can be a very effective double team, I think, when the first man to hit the blocker or the defender turns out to be the initial receiver. Anderson drops again. Fires. Pass is caught this time by Ross. He'll be about a yard short of a first down, it appears. Bobby Leopold. The you know, one thing we'll see him here now it'll be a single block by Anthony Munoz you get him thinking see now here we go he's trying to get an inside move but Munoz is so big at 275 pounds and so strong that when he took that inside he said okay you're going in there I'll let you go there boom right to the ground took him down right by Anderson's feet here is McAnally one punch so far today 53 yards. Block this one. McAnally hangs this one high and deep. White Hicks starts up field. It is swarmed on by Cincinnati. Good coverage by the Bengals. First man down was John Simmons, number 25. First down, San Francisco. At their own 34, they lead 14-0. They put Solomon in motion. The fake is to Patton. Good fake. Clark is open. He'll have a first down in Cincinnati territory. Bobby Kemp, the defender. Those are the greatest passes to throw on first down. And we'll see what the fake does. When you fake a run, you're trying to hold these linebackers in here so that you can get him into this area. Now watch how the fake affected those inside linebackers. See, now here's the fake. They step up, and Clark is able to get right in behind them. First down, San Francisco. They start from the Cincinnati 49. Ricky Patton, the ball carrier, got a couple. Ricky went to high school in nearby Flint, Michigan. He and Williams were teammates, the Cincinnati linebacker. The only difference was in high school, Williams was a tailback and Patton was a linebacker. Right. Now they've reversed roles. How did he get that name, Ricky? His mother enjoyed television, particularly I Love Lucy. His real name is Ricky Ricardo Patton. His full name, I should say. Second and seven. He'll get another try. And Ricky Patton rolls down to about the 40. Very close to another Niner first down. Ricky Patton didn't play in the championship game against the Cowboys. Bill Wall said he wasn't ready, but he's ready for the Super Bowl. It's a shoulder square. Boom. Turn it upfield. Ross Browner came from the other side of the defense. To make the stop, Ricky Patton, who bounced around Atlanta, Green Bay, left his heart in San Francisco. And he likes it. First down, 49ers. 39 yard line of Cincinnati. 
the line of scrimmage. Clark is lined up tight on the left side this time. A formation they like very much. Mike Wilson also in the game. The Cooper. Cooper breaks. Leclerc's tackle. But Kemp and Hicks were right there quickly. A lot of people wild about Joe Montana right now. Second down, San Francisco. They need six for a first. They operate from the Bengal 35. Charlie Young was the man in motion. Browner is close. Pass was intended for Young as Montana just barely got it away. Lynn Cameron knocked it loose from Charlie Young. Lynn Cameron didn't go for that fake. They brought Charlie Young across held him there and tried to bring him underneath Cameron. Glenn Cameron just waited right there for him. Montana once again looking to the sideline. Watch now Charlie Young is on the left. We see him right there. Now watch the hit that he takes after he throws the ball. Boy those quarterbacks really take a beating. Eddie Edwards was the man first there. So it'll be third down and six. What a catch. Dwight Clark hit in the back just as he made the reception, but a diving catch by Dwight Clark. I don't know how Dwight Clark does it. You know, you, you see Dwight Clark, he catches those things on the sidelines and up the field. But I'll tell you, when he goes inside, he always gets this type of thing. Watch, him working on Riley. He gets his hand on him. Can he stretch out and catch that ball in the middle of the field? That was not a bad job by Riley. No, that's as close as you can get. Clark has to take a little vacation on the sideline. He's replaced by Mike Schumann. The handoff is to Ricky Patton with a couple of blockers in front. Patton out of bounds on the far side of the field. 49ers fans seated on that side think he was hit out of bounds. Reggie Williams did the hitting. That Bengal sideline, you could say that they're really concerned about this drive. Up 14 to nothing. This is a big deal for the Cincinnati Bengals. They have to stop the 49ers now. They can't let them get that third one in there. Very solemn group. Anthony Munoz. Outstanding offensive lineman of the year in the NFL. Cincinnati, you remember earlier, had to call a timeout, so they only have two left. San Francisco has all of theirs. Second down from the 22. Solomon in motion. Hand off Cooper. Earl Cooper rolls down to almost the 15 before Ross Browner trips him up. Well, the 49ers have them. their three timeouts left. They can really run the clock down. They let a little of it go. They're taking a timeout right now. But they would like to get a score, and when they do, not leave any time on the clock for the Bengals. Third and one, 54 seconds left to play in the first half of Super Bowl 16. San Francisco again on the move and leading 16 nothing. A 14 nothing, sorry. 16 is the quarterback. He needed one, he got it. He scored a touchdown like that earlier in this game. It's been an effective play all year long. You know, another effective thing that the 49ers have done, they've had seven third down situations and they've picked up six of them. They're going quickly as Solomon goes in motion and Montana goes back. Outside Solomon, he has it. Out of bounds at the five. Bill Walsh, how calm he is there. I'm so impressed with every play is a different play. Every receiver is a different receiver. We saw Solomon come across in motion. He'll come up the field and then run an out pattern to the sideline. He's not playing like he's hurt, is he? No. He says, this has been too long, and we've really done too much this season to miss the Super Bowl. Second down, two, 29 seconds left in the first half. The Bengals with their backs to the wall. Here's Montana rolling right and looking and throwing. Clark caught it. Incomplete. The ball came flying out of the bottom of the pile. Clark appeared to have it for just a minute. With Glenn Cameron wrapped all over him. Looked like Glenn Cameron. It looked like the free safety. Brian Hicks was there also. We'll see it. This looks like the big play that they got against Dallas. The same thing. He starts to the side. Instead of going to the receiver, he goes inside. And you're right. We saw Hicks come in first and knock the ball away. 
It'll be third and two at the Cincinnati five. A 12th play in this drive. San Francisco dominating the first half. Montana looks into the end zone and throws it out of there. On purpose. And Ray Worshing, who never looks up once he starts from the sideline. He never looks even at the goalpost. This is an interesting thing. He won't look at the goalpost. You see him feel Montana there. And he'll say, help me, help me, help me to get the spot. Now you see he touches him once he has his spot. Now he looks at the hash marks on the field because the hash marks are an extension of the goalpost. And he still hasn't looked up. Nope, and he won't. If it's good, he'll look up. It's good. 22 yards out. Ray Worshing. San Francisco 17, Cincinnati nothing. San Francisco 17, Cincinnati nothing. And we're winding down the first half. 15 seconds left to play. They have to be very satisfied with what has transpired in the Silverdome first half. Bengals have two timeouts remaining. David Verser will handle it if Worshing catches it right. Both teams two timeouts remaining. San Francisco's don't matter. I would think with 15 seconds Pat that probably the Bengals time timeouts really don't matter either. I think they'll just take this kickoff return unless they get an exceptional kickoff return they'll probably just run the clock out. Or unless San Francisco gets another turnover. Tough one to handle. Inside the five. And let's see, the clock is stopped with five seconds to go. San Francisco 49ers thinking they have it and they could break the whole thing open right now if they do. San Francisco has it. I know Bill Walsh on that sideline. I know they'll go for another one right here. Watch Archie Griffin. It was a ball that was tough to handle. Then he couldn't pick it up. Just as he went to, he gets hit. We we'll see his brother, Ray Griffin, try and pick it up. He can't get it, and the 49ers end up with it. Rick Jervis made the hit on Griffin, and Milt McCall, a reserve linebacker, made the recovery. That is the third Cincinnati turnover. It'll be first and goal San Francisco at the four-yard line. Worshing is already present. I thought they may take one shot at the end zone being that close. And then if they didn't get it, kick a field goal. But Bill Walsh must feel that with five seconds, he better get the three. Ray Worshing still looking at the artificial surface. Somebody jump. Still five seconds on the scoreboard clock. Walt Downing. Start offense. All start against the offense. False start. Bill Walsh is there. He wasn't even upset about that. But here's a big story in this game. Look at those turnovers. Cincinnati 3, San Francisco All 1. Start, 62 and 71 offense. If you're playing for Cincinnati, First of course, you have to be very aware of the fact that Montana can not only can throw it, he can run with it. Pershing pops it right through. That's what's happened. Interception, San Francisco got a score. Fumble, San Francisco got a score. Another fumble, and San Francisco just got three. Worshing again set to kick off. Verser and Griffin back deep for Cincinnati, but Worshing has been bouncing it and does it again. This time, We'll just stay with it. A little scuffle broke out between Amos Lawrence. At the beginning of that, Eric Wright comes in to join things. But that's the end of the first half. As Bill Walsh takes his 49ers into what has to be a very happy locker room. They lead, uh, they lead Cincinnati 20 to nothing. The 49ers only had 
one, and the score was 21 to three. They've had three turnovers in this game, and the 49ers have scored after every one of them. You know, that's the important statistic. Last, well, in the championship game, the 49ers had six turnovers, but Dallas only scored one time after those six turnovers. That's what's happened. Interception, San Francisco got a score. Fumble, San Francisco got a score. Another fumble, and San Francisco just got three. Worshing again, set to kick off. Mercer and Griffin back deep for Cincinnati, but Wershing has been bouncing it and does it again. This time, we'll just stay with it. A little scuffle broke out between Amos Lawrence. At the beginning of that, Eric Wright comes in to join things. But that's the end of the first half as Bill Walsh takes his 49ers into what has to be a very happy locker room. They lead, uh, they lead Cincinnati 20. What do you call it? Resiliency? I guess. <laughs> Worshing with it down at the 35. He looks up on kickoffs, but not on field goals or extra points. Both kickers, Breach and Worshing, went to the University of California. Not at the same time. Worshing hangs it high. Deep and Verser goes back to the one. A little wedge in front, but the 49ers tear it apart. Rick Jervis. Let's look at the statistics of the first half. Of course, again, we've been talking about those turnovers. The one down in the right-hand corner, three turnovers for the Bengals, and that's it. But look at the passing. The 49ers have had 132 yards to 73 of the Bengals. Total yards, 208, over twice as many yards on offense as the Bengals. And 14 more offensive plays. First down, Cincinnati. They start from their own 17. Anderson back to Alexander. On first down, Alexander with some running room. Swings outside to the right. Knocked out of bounds by Dwight Hicks. A different offensive formation. It was. I think there's a flag on that play, Pat. It came out late right on the sideline. That may be one of those late hits on the sideline. Face mask number 22. It's against Dwight Hicks, a face mask violation. Reminds me that we have not had a chance to identify the officials. We've told you about Pat Haggerty. We'll get to the rest of them in just a minute. As soon as he tells us about that violation. see it right in now you see him grab the face mask with his left hand there now that's a five yard penalty they say because he really didn't try and grab it if it was a flagrant foul it would be 15 yards it's the first down cincinnati at the 35. they've been a good come from behind team all year long pitch back to johnson alexander out in front and johnson is bounced out of bounds by keena turner and willie harper on the stop you know, it's interesting, the 49ers defensively have been a three-man line team all year. They're starting this half with a four-man line with Fred Dean in there. We run down the rest of the officials quickly. Pat Haggerty, the referee, Al Conway, the umpire, the headline the linesman is Jerry Bergman, the line judge Bob Beeks, back judge Bill Swanson, side judge Bob Rice, the field judge Don Hakes, and the alternates Gene Barth and Grover Trimmer. Second and seven at the 38. Anderson looks quickly, throws quickly. Alexander has complete for about three yards. Carlton Williamson up with...